How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another video. It's your host, Rising Oblivion. Today, I got a guest, my boy, the Midnight Channel. We're going to be talking about 10 different things that we would like to see within SMT5. And we kind of got a list here, and some of our points sort of coincide with other ones. So, how you been, man? Doing great. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm pretty excited to talk about this uh, game. Yeah, I mean, we have all this, all these trailers and all this hype and stuff, which leaves like some open-ended questions. So there's still certain things we haven't seen for the game. So there's still a good bit that we can speculate on as to like what we think we should have in the game. I've only played SMT3 and some of the Persona games, and I know you have a bigger background. Like, what what all like SMT games have you played? You've played most of them, haven't you? I think I think it's easier to tell you which ones I haven't played. I haven't played <laughs> yeah. SMT2, and I haven't played SMT IF, and the original Mega 10 games. And some of the older Mega 10 games prior to SMT1, I haven't played that. Other than that, I've played all of them. Like, you're like the, <laughs> the Shin Megami Tensei, like, Lorax, bro. <laughs> Alright, so let's let's start here. Do you want to you wanna go first with one of your points? Uh, just, sure, just sort of sure. go back and forth? So, one of my bigger points that I have... It's been a thing that I, I kind of discussed this in a video earlier, shameless plug kind of thing. <laughs> it's the um, alignment system. So I always love Mega 10 because of the alignment system, you know, having the law and chaos and neutral and like making choices and like, uh, you know, having the different uh, endings and everything like that. Uh, but I feel like the alignment system could be polished a little bit better. Uh, sometimes it really boils down to angels and demons bad and good kind of thing although it's not really like that it does feel like that and it does feel like the game is almost pushing you in a single direction for example in uh nocturne it really very well feels like it's pushing you towards uh, the um, the true demon ending it's really i mean you're literally a half demon half human being so the game really feels like it's pushing you in a particular direction i really would like a game where it just allows you to really get to know the different characters and kind of have a, a more um interesting economy between the different alignments so that's my number one do you mean like like a visual alignment thing like similar to like what catherine has not necessarily but i do, although um they do do that on a shin megami tensei game strange journey you actually have uh, an advantage when it comes to the alignment system for example you can recruit uh so the alignment you know so you can recruit demons that are in the law alignment or chaos or neutral and they actually separate by a different color system so you know which alignment you're in the entire time um but uh not only that but you actually get advantages from that so if you're uh in the neutral alignment and the demons that you have are also neutral you get a bonus from that so it's actually a pretty cool mechanic like uh, gameplay wise because it encourages you to, to be in a specific alignment but it, it does give you a kind of like a reward risk system like sure you know maybe you're losing out on law demons so maybe there's a demon that you like on law but you know you go recruit this demon that is chaos and it gives you a bonus from that or whatever so uh gameplay wise actually a really cool feature like that should be be implemented on any Mega Ten games because again right. it does have like a specific bonus that it makes you feel like, eh, you know, like I like the Chaos Demons. They are pretty chill. You know, they give you a bonus on X, Y, and Z. You know, like it just makes it better. So, um, not necessarily like that, but I do feel like that should be a feature in other games. Like it's it's too good to only be on one game. I think. Yeah, I think also helps like not make the game as confusing sometimes you just don't know what's happening like an actual good alignment thing would kind of help but um right, let's move yeah. over to my list i got um we were talking a little bit before this but i did like a better overworld like expiration especially with like items and rewards i feel like sometimes and you said smt4 is a little better with this when it comes to items and whatnot but like being rewarded better for exploration i think is a good thing we're not 100 percent sure how open smt5 is going to be with like open world concepts and whatnot but i hope Hopefully they do it pretty big. At least have certain spots that are pretty big, like open world. Like, I would like to have similar to certain things, like in like Mementos in P5. You have the chest and stuff like that that you can find that usually have like actually pretty good lootable items. And I want to have, I think SMT have a really good like sense of exploration. And like if you explore something really far away, to be rewarded a lot more for it. 
Because sometimes you do like puzzles and things that are optional and it gives you like three medicine or something like that. And it's like, that's not like... Maka, you're like, fuck you. <laughs> you gotta yeah, it's like Maka from doing all this stuff. Uh, no, I, I totally agree with you. I have uh, the open world thing too. And you know what you're talking about reminded me of in Shin Megami Tensei 4. You actually, there's this additional extra dungeon that you can explore. And uh, what it does is you go to the dungeon, you fight a boss, and you get some additional bonuses from that. And like, again, there you don't have to do them at all. And you encounter them all the time. You're like you're walking around and you see the the thing or whatever, and you see them over there in the corner. You're like, like okay, I'll, I'll go fight it. But sometimes you're like level 20 and the, the boss in that floor is like level 60. So uh, it's, it's really a risk and reward situation. Like you very much just be getting fucked there for a few hours if you try to do that. It's a good grinding spot, but it's also like, you know, you get, you have to pick and choose your battles there. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so on my side of open world, uh, I do have more of like more exploration, like how big the world is, but also I don't really like the overworld perspective so you have a little character that is really really small it's like a blue dot and then you have the entire map and it just looks literally like a map from like google maps or something like that and then your character <laughs> just kind of walks around uh, i mean like i get it maybe like the playstation 2 era or even like on the on the 3ds it's like the system just wasn't implemented it's like yeah it's a concept. technology so, problem yeah right? exactly but i'm really hoping that smt5 does have like a really big open world thing it doesn't have to be like skyrim big or anything like that maybe like open hub areas you know like um areas that you can explore and find things maybe like you were saying like really like find some pretty cool stuff maybe a dungeons or or some and like you have to go over here and get some keys or whatever and you find some kind of treasure or something like that um maybe uh, something like that i feel like it, it could benefit from a more open worldness kind of thing it doesn't have to be super open but at least some kind of uh and like a strange thing is smt5 with all the trailers we've seen we haven't seen like an overworld like a map view yet like smt3 and whatnot have where you're just using like a cursor to travel around We've seen the character walking around, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, like, I wonder, like, do we, like, I wonder if it's just not a thing, that's why they haven't shown us, or if it actually will be a thing. Yeah. I'm not I, sure. I it could be one 50 50 there, I think. One, it probably don't, they don't want to scare new players into, like, holy shit, look at this Google Maps. Or, on the other hand, it, ju it could just not be one, you know, like, maybe, uh, we just haven't seen enough of it to really, like, make a decision on that, right? Uh, I feel yeah. like this demo, uh, this game should have a demo. I think, like, no, if anything, other than because I'm so excited for it, that a demo will, like, benefit other people that are not Mega 10 players to kind of get an idea of what they're getting into. Um, and that's yeah, not definitely. one of my, that's that's not one of my choices, but I, it's just a suggestion for Atlas if they were here to do this. A demo. <laughs> yeah, true, dude. <laughs> uh, all right, then, I just, the second thing I have on my list here, and... Because I've been streaming a lot of SMT3, a little shameless plug there, and I've been loving it and playing it a lot. I would like to see a return to, like, the big fiend battles, just like, you know, fighting all the different versions of death, like the Red Rider, the Black Rider, and stuff like that. There are optional in SMT3, which I think is cool, but giving us, like, optional big bosses to fight, and a lot of times it would reward you. Like, you'd get a new Magatama, like, every single time you'd fight one. And that in turn would like give you the stuff for the Kalpas. I'm not saying we need the Kalpas because sometimes the Kalpas were a little too much for like SMT3. So I don't know if we want that exactly in SMT5, but getting the big battles would be super cool. Cause it, you know, it helps you like test like your power and giving you extra bonuses and the big boss fights are just really badass too. And they're voiced like that's most of like right. the voice stuff you hear in the game is like those big battles. Yeah. So I'd really like to see those return. Not only that, but it's also like a true test of strength. Like it really, uh, it really gets you up to speed. It might good to go for the rest of the story. Who knows, right? But if you have these like mini boss battles, which it turns out they're, they're really more than mini boss battles. They, they, they are really good checkpoints to kind of know whether you are at the right level, do you need to grind some more? Because sometimes going from battle to battle, sometimes they're so fast you can go half the way through the game just in quick mode, you know, just skipping through battles or whatever. But really, yeah. you get to like skeleton battle, you're kind of like, ah, shit, I need to grind for another 10 levels or something. You know, like, right. that's really what it kind of shows you where you're at when it comes to that stuff. So I totally agree with you. I think that uh, we could definitely benefit from those. Uh, the closest thing that I can think of is 
There are some DLC, but again, quote their DLC uh, boss battles that you can do. But most of them are like really late New Game Plus kind of thing. Like you gotta be like level 200 or something like that to fight some of them. So it's not like really early in the game or anything like that. It's like really late kind of thing. So having something from time to time show up, I think it gives you a sense of pressure and really knowing what to go from there. Uh, so I think it's like that's a really good choice there. Um, so my next one I have is New Demons. And we actually seen this mm. quite a bit on like already on the trailers and everything. We're seeing uh, demons from the Philippines. There's like French werewolf. There's like all these other like uh, new goddess and, and demons that we've seen so far. Uh, Nua, for example, in the new trailer. Uh, I love new stuff. I love new demons. And I feel like uh, we've seen a lot of Japanese demons. We've seen a lot of like Greek and Roman demons and that kind of stuff. We could benefit from other demons from other countries, like maybe from like Africa or like South America or something like that. So uh, that's really something I would like to see more, like a lot more new demons. Definitely. Well, I feel like a lot of the times you end up seeing a demon and like, I even do this sometimes on stream, which is like a little unprofessional. Like I'll see a new demon. I'm like, what lore is that from? And I'll look it up and be like, oh, this is like some country I've never even heard of, you know, and they have like pretty cool lore about all the different things which is like what i love about smt3 and like the ones that i've played anyway it's it pulls from so many different sources i, I really want to know because i heard i don't know if this number is true or not i heard like 400 demons are in smt5 and if that is true i want to know the ratio of like new demons and old demons i'm kind of like curious to yeah. see like where where do they draw the lines like a hundred new ones like 300 old ones just half and half I don't know. I don't feel like it's going to be a ton. I feel like it's going to be like, I don't know. I, it's hard for me to gauge really. Cause I don't know. Even when I played SMT3, I don't know how many of those are like new demons for like SMT3. So I don't know. Yeah, definitely. I, I totally agree. I don't know either. Like it's really hard to really gauge like you were saying that how many of them are new or not. Uh, because also what Doi, the, the new artist is doing is he's reworking a lot of the old uh, SMT designs. Uh, you can see Angel, for example, or uh, Jack Frost. There are like so many of them that are like legacy, like they're being there from the first game ever, and they're like now like they look so different from like uh, every iteration and everything. So uh, it's also that like you also not only do we get new demons, some of the older demons are also getting a rework on like what they look like and everything. So yeah, I appreciate poor Loki. that. It, it gets it gets a little bit of like uh, uh, reworking and everything like that. You were saying poor Loki. Yeah, Loki's been like changed, I think the most, right? Somebody in my chat always tells me that like Loki Loki looks different in like I think P four and SMT three and SMT five because it's a catchy's um, like true true persona, right? He's changed so many times through the different iterations. I wonder if it is going to be SMT five. I wonder what one they're going to go for or if loki's just going to look completely different again i don't know it's weird but yeah, um yeah definitely yeah all right let's move on um i believe it's my turn i think a decent one would be i think it's just because the music lover in me but like having an actual music player while to be able to listen to it or like actually select the tracks that you'd like to listen to at certain points and maybe like the overworld's a good thing or just still find out just listen to on your own maybe not even while playing the game but like have a music player that can pull maybe from other games too of like just the different tracks you want to hear while playing because i feel like music's such a big part of like a lot of the meg 10 games because i love the music so much and i sometimes like end up getting in battles i'm just like this track's okay but i much rather i listen to a different track you know and especially with how repetitive battles can be sometimes and how long you get to hear like overworld themes and background music i think it'd be cool to be able to like select the ones you want yeah. and stuff like that you know that's an interesting uh one to point out the only game that i know that has ever done that from the get-go is persona 3 portable you can actually change tracks when you're on tartarus you have like three or four different choices of songs so you're not listening to the one monotone song the entire time that you're like in tartarus or whatever that's, that's the only dope. time that you can uh do that uh, DLC wise, you can do that in, in SMT3, for example. Uh, the H3 Remaster, you can change between the soundtracks from the different games. And uh, I believe some of the Nocturne games, you can, I'm, I'm sorry, the other SMT games, you can do it as well. But it's always been DLC, it's never been like part of the game. So 
Right, uh, yeah. It, it would be cool to have it as part of the game. Uh, for example, in Persona 5, whenever you wear a different outfit, you have a different uh, battle song or whatever. Yeah, it plays so, the themes from the uh, the other games if you're wearing an outfit. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So maybe like like you were saying, like actually have like a Navi or like something that you can change uh, music with or whatever, like an MP3 player or something. I don't know. Uh, it would be cool to have something <laughs> like that. That is not DLC. Like, <laughs> yeah, feel, like, like in the game. It shouldn't be DLC. That should be like part of the game and everything, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I guess my, my turn. Uh, yeah, my, you too. The next one that I have is choice and consequence. Now that kind of uh, goes along with the one that I mentioned earlier with alignment, uh, but this one focuses more on the actual choice and the consequence of your actions. Um, the game, the game that does this the better, uh, the best actually will be uh, Catherine. Uh, there's every time that you have in a conversation with people, when you text people on the phone, when you like have this. Uh, places when you have to choose between two things or whatever all this different stuff kind of allows you to like get the meter up and down like this different stuff it's like a morality kind of thing uh in nocturne sometimes for example that you'll be having this conversation and then your your friend is like do you want to join me in my crusade and you're like yes or no like there's like there's no like <laughs> conversation there doesn't it doesn't lead up to a point it's just a little yes or no kind of thing it feels like pretty cheap on like the on the scale of like uh you know it doesn't really feel like there's like an action alignment thing uh other games do it better but it's always been really raw and it doesn't feel really organic uh you very much yeah. know where you are going yeah you know? like you know you know which ending you're going for like people literally people will be like are you going for the chaos ending or law ending or whatever instead of going like yeah, I, I just really want to answer honestly and morally be able to like get to a specific ending just based on my choices. But like through choices, not do you want to join me? Yes or no? Like that's that, that doesn't to me that doesn't really feel like a like a true alignment situation. And especially with like like JRPGs like this, where you spend like a hundred to like even maybe like two hundred if you're like a completionist. Just to get an ending and figure out it's the one you didn't want because the game confused you, you know? It'd be nice to be, like, have an alignment or, like, a like being able to actually, like, see certain stuff like that and understand, like, okay, I'm definitely working towards this ending, so, like, I know I'm good. Because yeah. I don't always like to pull up, like, things to tell me what ending I'm going to get. Sometimes I like to just freely do it. Yeah, and just definitely. know. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes whenever you look up guides like that, you tend to get spoiled. You know, they tend to tell you, like, Oh, you know the this ending, and it's like you end up getting kind of spoiled on what's going on and everything. Uh, so to me, like if we had a true like choice and consequence things, where it really just feels too organic, you don't even know you're making a choice, like just out of conversations and everything. Um, games like the Life is Strange or uh, the, the Telltale games do that sometimes pretty well, where you're truly just like out of like the experience of the game, you're getting a story and you're kind of going somewhere i feel like that would be kind of what i would like to to see from games moving forward yeah definitely definitely all right moving on um this is the fourth thing on my list and I, I think this is pretty good i think somebody told me that you know one of the phone games i think like the make 10 phone games actually has an online battle mode which i think would be super interesting for smt5 like being able to have your team that maybe you've carried throughout the game and this would be good in-game content too to actually have in a multiplayer mode i know this isn't like something that maybe atlas is focusing on too much with their games but we are coming into like the modern period right a lot of stuff now is like online i think most games you beat them like for instance like you know most shooters like you beat the campaign or whatever and then you spend the longevity of the game after that like online so having smt5 have like an online mode where you can have your certain demons face against other people's demons i think is just a really good way because i mean even pokemon does that kind of stuff now too right like like the battle towers and stuff like that and you can Probably. fight together I think that only makes sense for SMT to also have. And there's so many combinations you could do with SMT as well, having a full party. I mean, it's sort of like a no-brainer, I think, for me, having an online mode in some way, like an online battle mode, I guess. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think it will be a cool one if they did something like that. And I kind of actually jumping on from yours, the one that you just mentioned, uh, I would like to see online co-op. Uh, so I have mm. experience from games like the... Neo game or the Dark Souls games 
where you can kind of recruit a, or you like you spend some kind of currency to be able to get somebody to go out and help you in the game. Sometimes Mega Ten games can be challenging at times, just like Dark Souls games. I'm not saying the Dark Souls of Persona or anything like that. But I mean, <laughs> that old but, name. <laughs> but I do mean like sometimes you want to get some help in the game. Sometimes maybe you want to help other people. Maybe your best friend's like, yo, I cannot beat this boss. I played it for like uh, six days straight and I still cannot beat it or something like that. And instead of telling him to get good scrub, you can actually just go jump and can actually kind of help him and everything. So that would be a cool idea, you know, just kind of like a co-op kind of thing. But not the whole game being co-op, although that would be an interesting idea too. But more like, uh, but if you just kind of just ju jump into a battle, maybe become kind of one of their demons or something like that. Or maybe loan him a demon or something like, here, use my Lucifer level 99 or something like that. I don't know. Uh, and they can just like wipe out the party with, <laughs> with just the one demon that you loan him or something. I don't know. It will be an interesting concept. Um, it's something that really was kind of encouraged the connection with other players or anything. Uh, it's not necessarily unheard of for games to have that kind of stuff. Persona, I think we were talking earlier, does have the feature where you can kind of see what other people chose to do that day. Yeah, like, right. Uh, uh, even like in, in, in battle, I think you can also do something like that. So there's all the different ways you can use the co-op system. It doesn't necessarily have to be you fighting with somebody else and helping them or something but i don't know it'll be interesting to see if they can come up with something like that and we were talking about like looking stuff up and how that spoils it too i mean if your friend could not come help you do a battle you wouldn't have to look up necessarily how to beat it then you know you wouldn't have to spoil yourself maybe as much you could just have your friend help you which would be kind of kind of interesting too yeah, yeah maybe be more immersive yeah all right so my last point and i think you have one more then too after that and this is like good story and side quests, but just in side quests specifically, because we were talking about before this about how sometimes side quests, even in like Persona games sometimes, you know, it doesn't feel super, you know, good or feel like it's actually attributing to something. It's more like fetch quests, I guess you could say. And even sometimes like certain games like Borderlands, fetch quests could sometimes be done really well. But even with the fetch quests in certain Meg Tang games, they're not super great and aren't story heavy some of the times. Not saying there hasn't been any side quests that haven't been like really good, but typically I think on average a lot of them are sort of like tedious and just fetch questy. Like go kill this demon, go get that item, and you check something off a list, and then you get like a small reward. But having like longer, um, you know, like story-driven side quests would be super cool. I think that would be really fun to have. Uh, for smt5 and it gives give the game some merit i understand like they do want to focus more on like the core game itself but if they're going to put side quests in i think having an actual good story driven side quest would be really nice to have within the game and give you more replay value for the game honestly as well absolutely i totally agree with you i think that there is a point where you're kind of seeing and you're like yeah it, it will be fun to have like a cool quest along with them because a lot of them sometimes it's like Oh, you you know like to tell you like oh like somebody went missing and you need to find her uh find them or whatever and then you find them they're dead and you're like oh okay you know pick up the items <laughs> go back and, and that's the end of the quest but like what if that was like the start of a chain quest of like investigating and like trying to find out what happened and like going around doing some detective work or something like that and you can like find a cool like nice storyline you know it like builds up the lore maybe you get to know all the characters better or something like that uh, again not saying that's n that mega 10 has never done that because some games do it in including persona i think some of the, the there's been some pretty cool side quests in persona 5 for example and other games other mega 10 games also have some pretty cool side quests but uh, more than not often you all just do get just uh, the monotone like go pick up five items or kill kill this demon or something like that it's kind of like yeah eh, you know it's like it doesn't really want me it doesn't make me want to go do more strikers is really that that with like sophia's stuff where it's like go to you know go to shibuya and kill five you know jack frost or i don't think that was an actual one but like it's something like that and it's like that's it i go and do that and it's like the item is like a healing item or something it's like that's what I get for the rewards? Like, dude, that's so, yeah. like, I could go find that in a chest. Like, why am I doing the side quest? That's kind of pointless. Right, There's a lot right. of those. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally agree with you. So I have a bonus uh, one that I had here. 
and that was for the new game plus to do more interesting stuff this is actually tied to nocturne particularly because nocturne doesn't really have, have a good new game plus like you don't start with the items you don't start with levels you don't start with uh with any of the stuff that you got from the previous game or the demons or anything like that pretty much the only thing is you can go back again to the to the demon uh, summoning place and summon the demons you had on, on there but other than that there's like nothing else like there's no encouragement to actually do new game plus other than obviously story and and getting new alignments and stuff but there's no other like uh, rewards from from that or anything so more, more new game plus content will be cool on the other hand you have games like uh Shin Megami Tensei 4 that has like crazy stuff like new dlc new game plus demons and that kind of stuff it should be like a, like a balance kind of thing but uh i personally would like to see more elaborate new game plus i think some games do it pretty good like uh and these are not uh necessarily rpgs but for example the last of us part two or resident evil does it really well you have extra points yeah you can use those points to get like unlimited ammo or like uh you know like you can modify the game in like other crazy ways for example there's there's a mod in the last of us where you can make the game so hard you can make it perma dead so if you die one time then the <laughs> game is completely over uh you can do so like, imagine doing things like that on mega 10 like i feel like people that love to do like extremely challenging uh things or whatever those kind of stuff make it kind of interesting to go into new game plus kind of like a uh uh, like there was one another one that like if uh, everybody dies with one shot or you also die with one shot I think it's the devil may cry. I think that's what it is uh, Heaven That's or crazy. Hell. Yeah, like like you either everybody dies with one single hit But you can also die with one hit so you have to be the first one to start and actually do the the hit first um, Dude, I feel like I feel like a lot of times when I do a new game plus I also put it on the hardest difficulty So it's like even though I might be getting more items and stuff. It's still challenging so like still giving items i think should justify because i feel like i'd understand they didn't want to do a new game plus because it's like you're just gonna run through the game and make it easy but you could also make it harder too through a new game plus i feel in some ways yeah, even though course. they're going to be giving you more stuff yeah yeah like it's, it's it's really like a risk and reward thing it's going to be more challenging but you know how to play the game already and and you already have some you know you, you already know how to like used items and everything like that so i think a, a new game plus like that that'll be pretty cool i think i think it will like really spice things up for like veterans of the series and everything they want the real challenge on mega 10. yeah for sure either way i'm super hyped for smt5 i think i think it's gonna be an amazing game i think we're gonna have a lot of fun with it too and even though the game might not have a lot of the stuff we put on this list i think it's still good just to talk about and figure out what we want let us know down in the comment section below some of the things that you might like to see in SMT5 or I guess not like to see in there as well. But um, it's been my boy, the Midnight Channel. Go subscribe to him. He's got a Twitter. He's got a Twitch as well. You can find him on Twitch. Give him a follow. Give him a sub. I'd appreciate it a lot. I'll have a link to his stuff down in the description below. But um, anything last thoughts there, bro? Oh, well, thanks so much for uh, having me here. This was a pretty fun video to do. I always like to talk about Shin Megami Tensei 5 right now. The hype is real. I cannot wait for this game. Uh, but yeah, guys, let us down below in the comments down below what you want to see for Shin Megami Tensei 5. It can be something we haven't said. I've seen some pretty uh, cool stuff from other people that they come up with. So I want to see what you, uh, you guys have to say. Yeah, I mean, this community is creative. I'm sure we'll see some crazy stuff. But um, yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Like, comment, subscribe for more content. Like I said, go check out the Midnight channel as always. Thank you all so much for watching.